You see the games these motherfuckers play? 2021 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat production run increased to satisfied demand. Only 2,000 units of the Hellcat engine Durango were supposed to be manufactured, and all of them sold out in just a matter of weeks. Dodge Garage reports that if a dealer has a sold order in the system, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles will be obliged to ramp up production. Anytime you launch a limited production vehicle and plan to build fewer units than you, the number of dealers across the country, you risk leaving a lot of customers very unhappy. As we finalized the production plan for this amazing SUV, we found a way to move some Hellcats from other vehicles to ensure every sold order in our system will get built. We didn't want to disappoint these customers and wanted to find a way to ensure that they were the part of the brotherhood of muscle. How many examples will be made is anyone's guess. Okay, you know what? I could stop pretty much right there. Uh, this is the game that FCA plays. Now, I saw the Durango on a dealer lot. Uh, I think it was maybe going on close to two weeks ago, which ended up in one of my videos. And the thing, the first thing I said was, well, wait a minute. If you're going to limit the production run, then why didn't you give it the little sticker badge that the demon has that tells you exactly how many that number is out of the total number that you knew you were going to produce? And it's funny because even with the Mopar editions, they've typically always done that like they'll put a little stamp on it that says yeah this is 66 out of 500 or whatever it is it's amazing what they're doing at this company like first of all i have to ask what moron thought that limiting the production of one of the two most practical hellcat vehicles you had made any sense because i'll tell you right now uh as you saw in my last video i drove the t-rex the problem is that thing is fucking gigantic. I can't use that thing in Manhattan. Even if I wanted one, it just doesn't make any sense. The Jeep Trackhawk makes more sense, but they did everything they could to make it like totally undesirable. They made it not as good looking as this Durango Hellcat. They didn't give it any of the new stuff that the Durango Hellcat got. They, they gave it no Hellcat hood. Nothing about it tells you it's a... I swear to God, earlier today, I was parked um, next to a, a, a car garage. Guy walks up. He parks a, a Ford truck right behind me. Guy walks up to my truck, and I was just turning on the remote starter. And the guy heard the thing start, and he starts looking at my truck, my Jeep SRT. And he says, hey, is that the track hog? And I was like... I was like, no, 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 this is not the track hook, this is the SRT. But the guy had no idea what the difference between the track hook and the SRT was simply because there was no identifying elements on it with the exception of the fact that from the side, the track hook has yellow calipers. Now, from the front, it doesn't have fog lights. Bottom line is they did everything they could to ruin the track hawk, and they did a great job ruining the track hawk. Yes, it's fast, but then when you watch that video that was recently released right here, when you watch that video of Throttle House giving an appropriate race between the Yoris, the track hawk, and the Durango, you basically watch the Durango beat the track hawk and the Yoris. The track hawk should have won that race because it's the lighter vehicle. But what they did was they screwed up the exhaust system on the track hawk and they gave it those two fake exhaust system pipes instead of just giving it a real quad exhaust. They didn't do that. They ruined that car's exhaust system. That's why it doesn't start up very loud. It's quiet. I don't know if they did that to meet Australia's noise requirements or some European shithole's noise requirements, but I don't care about those countries. Bottom line is, they came out of the gate swinging and made the Dodge product as good as it could be, while meanwhile making the Trackhawk not as good, but still better than that overpriced yours, 
which that's the one thing I'm very happy about. In fact, even if in this picture, you can see just how small that Yoris is compared to the Jeep Trackhawk and compared to the Durango because of that roof line. But I'm glad that this race was won, and I'm glad that we got the results that we got. But back to basics, the thing about it is I'm very disappointed with Dodge for doing this because even though now more people are going to have access to it, the thing about it is I'm pretty certain most of the people who went out and ordered and uh, put their money down for Durango Hellcat, now how are they feeling? Guess what? The Durango Hellcat is going to end up exactly like that Durango SRT that I saw on that lot. People are going to buy it. They're going to enjoy it for a while. They're going to get tired of getting nine miles to a gallon. And then they're going to take it and put it right back on that used car lot. So here you had Durango SRTs 2018, 2019 sitting on the lots. These cars, sadly enough, these are not really, you know, people are buying these things to use them as daily drivers. If you have enough money to afford to use this as a daily driver, okay. But these cars, man... As practical as they may be, sooner or later, a lot of people are dumping these cars because they're getting tired of getting that 9 and 10 miles to a gallon. So if Durango's were going to be produced in limited number, they should have gotten the same limited edition badge that the Demons got. And you know what's kind of funny? When I saw the, De when I saw the Durango Hellcat in person, Something told me that this exactly thing was going to happen because I was like, wait a minute, 2000, that's, that's far, that's way, that's, there's nowhere near enough. The Trackhawk, they produce more than 5,000 of those. Even if I think the number exceeds 6,000, there's no way in hell 2000 was going to be enough. So obviously this is what happened. Tim Kaniskas came out and told you, yeah, it's going to be a limited run. It's only going to be for one year, and it's only going to be 2000 But what he didn't tell you was that there's probably going to be more produced in 2022. So, therefore, what you believed was a limited run is not a limited run at all. They always had planned to do exactly this. They 2021, they made them. Okay, 2022, we're going to keep making them. But they whet your appetite. And you ran out there, you put your big deposit down, and now how do you feel? That, that's my question. If you're a Dodge Durango Hellcat owner, how do you feel now? I'm glad you got your car. But here's a question. How do you feel knowing that what you thought was going to be a limited edition is not? Could you imagine how demon owners would feel if they said, hey, you know what? The demon was so popular, guess what? We're going to make more of them. And, and not only are we going to make more of them, they're going to have 900 horsepower. Could you imagine how a demon owner would feel about that right now when they bought that car thinking it was a collector's item? And I'm going to take it back to myself. When I traded my 300 Hellcat for that 2016 Dodge Charger, I thought that car was going to be a limited edition car, but they got me. <laughs> So now you can get a 2016, just like the one I bought, you can get that for less than $55,000. Now, hell, you might be able to get it less than $50,000 with a lot of miles on it. But my thing is, it's like the red eye's out now. They're, they haven't obsoleted these cars yet because obviously they have a new car coming to get rid of the old Challenge and the old Charger. My thing is, I'm going to wait and see what they create next. And I'm going to see what that's like compared to what else is on the market. Because, obviously, if they're going to play games like this, and they, because you got to understand, these dealers, in order to get one of those dealer allotments, in order to get one of those cars, those dealers were charging people over sticker. Yeah, I, I think I've posted some of the stickers. These dealers were overcharging on the MSRP of this car and calling it a market-adjusted uh, value inflation or whatever they call it. It's some bullshit. But they did that making you believe... Like, there were people who were paying 100000 plus on a regular Dodge Charger Hellcat because they really believed, they were told it was going to be limited edition. Now, they're leasing those damn cars for six and six seven hundred dollars a month with $7,000 down. So, you know what? I just wanted to get this information out there. If this is the car that you were looking to get, you ain't in no rush to get it. All you got to do is wait. 
more are going to come. Maybe even new colors are going to come. But uh, I, I, just, I just find this amazing. These, this is the game that these people play.